That's right. Three right. times, five times, and whatever it is. Right. So that part of authentication testing, mm. once done, mm. can give you the confidence that you don't need to do it whether you are logging in for booking or you are logging in to make a cancellation. Because that's a separate component of the business process. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So authentication testing will be a separate module that you will carry on. But when you go into the system through login into a booking or a cancellation, you don't need to worry about that in that workflow. I mean, not at all. She need not worry because all is tested here. Right. So is that called a SOA software object company? Unit object testing? SOA is a very different animal. Okay. That is services oriented okay. application. Okay. Hmm. That's, I don't know how you got this term, but it is very different. irrelevant to what we are discussing. No, because what the reason I was thinking is because I'm thinking in terms of object. Like when you say write a C plus plus or some program, you know, when you write one object, you, you just develop the class and create the object. And when the other one was trying to do, they just pull that, pull that. They don't do it. So what are you doing in that? You're just creating modularity. Right. A module is built and used several times. Several times. So that's a, but in this case, uh, that module does not need to be exercised to the full potential. Search it every put. Okay. You don't have to do that. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You will test all data conditions for authentication right. in one separate test script. Once that is done, done, then you don't need to worry about doing the same thing when a user who is logging in for booking or a user who is generating a report or a user who is making a cancellation mm -hmm. to do all that stuff because that's already done. Because we are assuming when somebody, let us say he is going to do a test on the report module, she is going to do a test on the cancellation, cancellation. I am going to do a test on the booking. So we are all assuming when we do the login and more login piece when, a test, when, we, when we are testing the, let us say he is going to do the report thing module, when he opens the report module, it's a pop up login name and user. So we are all assuming we are all pointing to the same You will be same authenticated class. using the same, the same class. Same, same class. Class. We are all pointing to the same class. Not Absolutely. That, though it's written by different developers, it's all pointing to the same class. So I yeah. don't care that this model is written by X developers. I don't care about all that stuff. So you will have to define, which is what I said in the beginning itself. You have to identify the common components. Once you know the common components, then it is easy for you to modularize your approach. Right? The common component on this page is my header and my left navigation. Because I know when this page lifecycle begins, the header is picked up from this source code. The left navigation is picked up from this source code, which is common every time. So once I've tested that for functionality that the link works, link navigates the home will navigate to this page, Flights will navigate to this page. Once I've done that, that gives me good confidence that it is modular and all I need to do is have a test case included here if I need to, but otherwise I don't need to test. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So now what we've done, we have taken a question which says what are the various type of objects? Everything that I'm discussing here with you, the answers to that will be available for you through Wikipedia. But I need you to do some exercise mm -hmm. because by that you will be able to understand what are the various type of objects? What are their features? Because there are a lot of other objects that are there that you need to address. For example, in this application itself, when I log in. I have a question. Um, in the uh, first page, we just have itinerary on the top navigation. But in the second page, we start having it even before we book the flight. Okay, so, so now you're looking at, okay, let's look at this again. Uh, let me log in again. So you're talking about a non-logged in user, right? Yeah. Sure. There is no itinerary. No itinerary. Okay. Once you log in and you go in, you find an itinerary screen. Which no means itinerary. what? This is not a common module mm -hmm. across every page. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a separate module mm -hmm. that you need for login page. Okay. Post login, it is common. common right. My first condition was okay. find out okay. common components. Okay. Based on that, you can do smart testing. Okay. My actual question is, once I log in, how can I view the itinerary page when I haven't booked anything? So it will be blank right at that page that you have not done any flight booking. That's Let's look at that. This itinerary. Or I feel like only after we do the flight booking, then that itinerary. Uh, you know, Let's see what is that? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. This is after you vote. This is the one you oh this something sorry, I didn't take it. No, no, something no. that he did already. When it is a new user okay. and you go in, okay. at that time this page will not return anything. Okay. But if you are an existing user in the system, then you will see your previous booking. Okay. That's it. Again, now this is also a business requirement. That when a user is a new user, mm -hmm. the itinerary object should not be highlighted or displayed or available as an option. This could be a BA yeah. interpreting the requirement that I am a new user to your system. How do you expect me to have an itinerary? Yeah. Right? Yeah, really well, it, it's a question of your level of comfort with the application. That's right. why okay. the little training that you get before you start an application that gives you the confidence what you right. want. Right. And of course, there's no substitute to experience. Right. right? That is why people who are experienced in the industry get better rates. Right. It's not that they look pretty or they talk, they are tall, dark, and handsome. No, mm -hmm. because right. they have the experience that they bring to the table. A fresher, okay, let's take a very simple example. You walk into a restaurant where you have a reputed cook who's serving you. Versus you walk into a restaurant where a mom and pop store is open. What do you think will happen to the business in these two stores? Do I need to say that one of them will go bankrupt very soon? You will not risk your business at the cost of learning of the user or your team member, right? So this is the backdrop for us to understand about web application, client server application. Now on client server application, I want to show you one more thing that we did not see earlier, which is again the objects on the page. So here, now you look at another command object which is a menu. And in a menu you see sub menu options. Right? So this is another control object menu and sub menu options. Then you have objects here that are taskbar which are directly programmed to execute a function which is also done by the menu. This flight reservation for the customers or for the agency that is for the agent. Agents, okay. That's why they were able to view the report time. Right, right. So you have various functions here that you can do. Now, one more thing that I want to highlight for you and watch the application very carefully what goes on. At each step, because remember, when I mentioned to you default, user action, and after user action are the three stages in verification. Right? So see what happens when I execute these steps. So by default when the page is served, everything is blank. You see some objects that are not active, disabled. So all these are disabled. Right? The flight button, if I click, nothing happens. So let's see what happens now. Now I'm making a booking for 12, 12, 12 a date in future, I select a flight starting from Denver to London. Did anything change? So what happened? What does that mean? Upon user action, there is a change in the application object, which will be part of your testing. So once the user has a valid date selected and the fly from and fly to choices are also selected, the flights button will be enabled. And this will be part of the BRD, the business requirement documents, or the functional requirement specification, FRS. Based on that you will write your test case. Flight button enabled only if three options are chosen. When you click this, a flight table is delivered to you. So you have choice of flight. You can make a selection of the flight. Once you make a selection of flight, the flight data that was selected is populated in the edit field. And by default, the number of tickets is always one. 
if I change the number of tickets, mm -hmm. total number of tickets. Question. I think it's just the price of, we assume the total is calculated based on tax and all that stuff, right? So for all this, do we need to do the code or how are we calculating it? You'll calculate based on your business requirements. As my number of tickets changes, mm -hmm. The price times the number of tickets should be the amount to be charged. If there is a tax incidence that's there, the information for the tax incidence will also be provided. You don't have to go to the code. You have to look at your functional piece mm -hmm. on the application. Because your functional testing is on the screen. On the screen. Right. You're not going into code. This is black code is black box for you. No, but how do I okay, right. But my assumption is like when I say uh, hoping that they have, these people have calculated the price properly. This amount that is charged here, mm -hmm. that will reflect the charge or interest or um, your tax as well. That, that is again going to be specified in my BRB. Of course. Ashish, I have one more question. You know, whatever she asked, the same one, but I just try to change the uh, the If I know your name, yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, so here the price we have mentioned 112.20 all right? Now, as a testing person, I get the test cases. I will also be able to get the BRD along with it in order to see the... You, will, you may not get the BRD. Yes. You will get so, test cases depending on... If you are a QA analyst, mm -hmm. you will do the transition of BRD into test cases. As a QA tester who is executing these, mm -hmm. you may not need the BRD with you. Okay. Because your test case will specify what steps what data, okay. what is the expected result? Only the QA analyst can view that and... QA analyst see. should view that okay. and come out with the test data conditions that need to be tested. Okay. So if I am booking one ticket... I'm confused. I'm confused. I will be given the talking about a structured team where QA analyst is responsible for creating the test cases, which will also create, which will also need the test data. So tester is just executing those test cases. Tester okay. okay. just executes it. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so the, the guy who is going, that, the QA analyst, so whoever he writes the test cases for me. So I just go and uh, I read the test case and click here and see that's happening. That's what I do? That's what okay. is the tester job. Okay. QA analyst finds the uh, error in this. In so some cases, your responsibilities can overlap. Mm -hmm. But a QA tester is responsible for execution. Yes, go ahead. Hello, this is Priya. I have a doubt. Go ahead, Priya. Yeah, uh, who, uh, how are the test cases generated and uh, does QA, QA analyst write the test cases? The QA analyst is responsible for creating the test cases, the test data that is required, and also define the test steps. That's the QA analyst role. But the roles can overlap. A tester can be an analyst, an analyst may have to be a tester as well, depending on the size of your team. Okay. If the QA analyst finds out that there is an error in this, but he, he or she is writing the test cases, but not doing the testing. So in this case, what does the QA analyst do? Like mention the that QA analyst is responsible for giving testable test cases. Okay. So if 